Hello Sodbusters. Last year I posted a series of videos showing how I was using a conversion hive that I built to migrate bees from Langstroth frames to Layens frames. I'll put a link to the first video in that series right here for those who want to go watch it first. Some who've watched those videos have asked if I had detailed plans for the conversion hive. When I made that hive it was before I was putting videos on YouTube and so I didn't really take video documentation of the process. I also built the hive kind of by the seat of my pants so I didn't take detailed notes as I was building. However, I did take some photos and I used them along with some measurements to make this video. Even without detailed plans, I'll provide some measurements and try to explain the steps that I took. I hope the information and examples here will be enough for those who want to build their own conversion hive to take what I did and adapt it for your use. Some people watching this may not be familiar with the difference between Langstroth and Layens frames. Did I put a video out explaining the difference between the different frame sizes and a lot of people have said they found that very helpful. But for now I'll give a brief summary of the difference between the frame sizes. A Langstroth deep frame is 19 inches long by 9 and 1 8 inches tall. A Layens frame is 14 and 5 16 inches long and 15 and 15 16 inches tall. So obviously these two frame sizes are incompatible to be put into the same hive. Um, anything wide enough for this is too wide for this anything this depth is going to be too shallow for this. It just doesn't work. Some people migrating bees from the Langstroth frame to the Layens will solve this problem by using an adapter to hang the Langstroth frame vertically. Now this requires that the hive is either deeper to account for what is now the taller frame or that your adapters stick up above the rest of your Layens frames. Another approach some people take is to do the same thing, but to cut apart the Langstroth frame so it will fit into the hive. Others have taken a different approach. They will hang the frames inside of the Layens hive using their own adapter that will let them hang the frames perpendicularly to the Layens frames. And this works, it gets them all in the same box, but I prefer to have the frames parallel to each other, more like natural comb. So I built my conversion hive to be able to do that. To hold both sizes of frames in their normal orientation, side by side, in a parallel configuration. When I started building the hive, I had some old Langstroth boxes that I reused. Three shallow supers and three deep brood boxes. And by using these, I was able to already have the correct internal width for the Langstroth frames, so I didn't have to do any measuring for that. I just used the boxes as they were. The first step of using these is to disassemble the boxes, to pull the side off of two of each of the boxes, so the sides off of two of the deeps and two of the shallows, and pull both sides off of the third box. And then I cut the fingers, and for those who are not familiar with joinery, the fingers are the little tabs that uh, interweave with each other to connect the corners. Um, so I cut the fingers off from the end boards, leaving an internal width of 14 and 3 quarter. So the third box that I cut both sides off of, I wanted that board to be 14 and 3 quarter inches long. And for the boxes that I cut one side off, I wanted the internal dimension from the inside of the side wall to the end of the end wall to be 14 and 3 quarter inches. Don't throw out those sides that are taken off. Those can be used for making the bottom of the overall hive. So then I screwed boards on the outside of those sections to tie the sections together. In my case, uh, using those length draught boxes, the boards are about four, 45 and 3 eighths inches long. Make sure you verify your lengths because between different manufacturers of the length draught boxes, there may be some variability. In my case, I used recycled white cedar. This was from an old garden fence, um, and this was just scrap lumber. I had run it through a planer to make it look nicer, get rid of the old rough edges of the boards, and uh, it came out looking pretty nice, but it did bring it down to about a 5 8 inch thickness rather than 3 quarters. Uh, so it was a little thinner than I had hoped, but it still worked pretty well. I offset those boards to overhang on the bottom and to leave a reveal 
at the top. And I'll explain in a little bit why I did that. In my case, I offset those by about an inch and a half, but that was just thumb in the wind deciding how much to offset that. And then I screwed those boards on using exterior grade screws from the inside of the boxes so I didn't have any exposed screw heads on the outside. I continued to clad the exterior of the box with wood. I really liked the way it came out. It provides a finished look. It adds some thickness for thermal mass uh, because this is not an insulated hive, but the, those additional thicker walls will help some with heat retention for winter and also with keeping the hive somewhat cool in the summer. The offset exterior boards that I mentioned earlier, it helps to keep to stack the boxes neatly. They just kind of fit over each other and, and the offset outer boards help to hold everything in place. It also seals against weather. Any rain will run down those outer boards rather than seeping through the joints. Had I lined those boards up with the edge, uh, there's more of a chance that uh, water could have gotten in. I did not attach the sections together. Uh, so they're not screwed together, and that provides easier portability. So I can carry the hive around into its final location in sections, and uh, if I need to move it, it'll come apart. Uh, so it's not so heavy and awkward to try to carry around. I left about a half-inch reveal at the top edge of the top boxes, and the, the lid will overhang this. So I'll describe that when I get to the lid, but also provides a little bit of overlap for a better seal. The end boards that I use to cover are... Um, about 19 and 7 8 inches long, but that is going to depend on the exterior wood thickness uh, that you use for your sheeting. So it's probably easier to put the outer wood on the sides of the boxes and then measure for what your end lengths are. Because I use the Langstroth Deeps and the Shallow Supers, I needed some additional depth for the, the lay-ins hive. In order to do that, I had to build a bottom spacer, and that spacer matches the dimensions of the interior box. So in other words, it's the length of the Langstroth hives together and the width of the Langstroth hives together. In my case, that was about 19 and 7 eighths inches by 45 and 3 quarters inches. The uh, depth for the bottom spacer needs to be at least 2 and 3 sixteenths inches. Uh, using the boxes as I did, that will provide the proper depth at the bottom, giving about three quarters inches below the lens. Now, in my case, as I recall, I went with just a three inch depth for that spacer. So you can go a little bigger. Giving a little bit deeper depth can make it a little easier to add the outer sheeting. You're not trying to cut a real thin strip, but that's kind of up to you. The sides that I had cut previously from the length drop boxes were used for the bottom. I just cut the ends off the boards to give them the internal length of the hive, or the internal width rather, 18 and 3 eighths inches, then inset those into the spacer for a floor and screwed that from the outside of the spacer and then that was covered up with the uh, exterior wood. Now, as far as building the lay-ins spacers, these need to be built and installed in pairs, and these spaces are just a basic box. The measurements I, I calculated for this are 2 and 5 16th inches by 14 and 5 eighths inches wide, which should be the internal width of the Langstroth box, taking off about an eighth of an inch to give you 1 16th of an inch on each side for a little you know, flexibility. We don't want to make it too tight, provide a little for the expansion of the wood. And then it needs to be 16 and 3 quarters inches deep if you go with the standard lay-ins depth. But that depth will vary depending on the actual box depth. Basically, the depth of the spacer box should match the depth of the box from the bottom up to the edge of the rabbit, which is the frame rail, not including the top of the spacer box. I hope that makes sense. So if you imagine you build the spacer box, and say your top is a piece of 3 8 inch plywood, and I'll talk about that a little more in a second. If you take that top off, okay, so you're taking off that thickness, then that overall depth of that box should be from the bottom of the hive up to just the edge of where the frames rest. So then when you put that top piece on, the top of the lay-in spacer box should be a 3 8 to 5 16 inch thick wood. Um, and I just use plywood. To be honest, I built this out of scrap that I had on hand. And then you're going to offset that by about 3 8 inches. So you're just going to slide it to the side. And that offset will create a lip on one side, which will fit into the frame rest. And it'll create a frame rest on the other side to hold the lay-ins frames. Now, the box that you make for the entrance side should have an internal board added to it 
to make solid wood throughout for your entrances. So you'll want to calculate where that filler piece of wood should go so that your entrance holes will go through it. Then I, when I drilled those entrance holes, I drilled them through the spacer and the hive box in one section. In other words, one of the three Langstroth boxes. And then I used that spacer as a template to drill holes in the other section. And that's just to provide flexibility um, if I'm moving my spacer around in the future. The entrances must be far enough apart to allow for entrance gates. And this is something I almost messed up. My gates are right next to each other. Had I put the entrances any closer to each other, then uh, the gates would have been overlapping, uh, which I guess is could still be functional, but wouldn't look very nice. Now the Langstroth frame spacer is basically just a box. Because of the use of the Langstroth boxes to build this, you don't really need to make any adaptation to hang the frames, but I didn't want the bees to be building comb on the bottom of the frames. So I built a spacer box to fill up the hive bottom so that the depth of the hive would just be the depth of the deep brood boxes. My spacer box dimensions are about 18 and one quarter inches long, 14 and 5 eighths inches wide. That provides a 16th of an inch on each end. And then in my case, about seven and one eighth inch deep. You should measure and calculate your sizes based on the boxes you use. Like I said, there can be some variability in Langstroth boxes. So you want your spacer box to fit. An eighth of an inch too big, and the box won't go in at all. If you make it too small, then you've got the bees getting into gaps, and they'll probably just fill it with propolis anyway. The depth, of course, may vary depending on the box depth, but the top of that spacer box should be flush with the rail of the lower shallow box. You don't want to go anywhere above the bottom of that uh, deep box because you want to give enough bee space for bees to move underneath the frames. I also want to point out that little gap that's between the boxes, uh, which is the uh, frame rest for the shallow box or the lower level of boxes, that little strip could be used by bees to get around the spacers. And I didn't want that. I'm trying to build this hive in order to keep the queen from moving between the size of the frames. I want to keep the queen isolated. So she's laying just on the frames I want the bees to move to. So to avoid the possibility of bees getting around, I cut a strip, which as I recall, was about 3 8 inches by 5 16 inches. And the length of the interior of the box and then use that to fill that rabbit between the deep and the shallow boxes. Uh, so blocking off that access point between hive sections. I built a queen excluder by cutting down an excluder screen, used a, had an old metal excluder screen, cut that down and then framed it with wood with fairly tight tolerances around the sides and the bottoms. You want you know less than an eighth of an inch gap on all sides of that excluder. You don't want your queen getting around it. And framing it up, I don't have any instructions here for how to do that, but it's, you know, basically you're just building a frame out of wood and you can use a table saw to cut a groove down the middle of each of your pieces of wood. If your saw blade is a standard one eighth of an inch wide, then that groove should be perfect to fit the edges of your queen excluder in. And it worked out pretty well, fit pretty well in this case. And by building the excluder to fit over top of that Lang spacer box, I saved some material so I you know, have enough to build another queen excluder for the box. Then cover boards will be used to prevent the bees from going through the top of the Langstroth frames and over the excluder. So you need to consider all access points that a queen might get around that excluder and make sure that you account for each of those. Now the external details on the hive, there are two one and one quarter entrance holes in each section. How many entrances you provide is kind of up to you. I built six entrances to give me flexibility for sectioning off that box. I could technically section this off and use one of the Langstroth sections as two smaller sections for queen rearing or making small splits or different purposes. So I wanted to give myself plenty of flexibility on that. And then the circular entrance gates that uh, you see here, which, side note, I have a link in the Sodbuster store. I will put that link in the description of this video where you can get 10 of those circular entrance gates for, I believe, $14. Uh, the link goes to Amazon where the purchase is made. But if you buy it through that link, it will help to support my work in making these videos. So I appreciate that. So anyway, these gates are about four inches in diameter. They have a one and a half inch opening and different settings. You can have the open setting, closed, ventilation, or an excluder setting. The intent being to let worker bees come in and out, but the queen stays inside. And this is handy if you are migrating bees and have moved them into a new hive and don't want them to abscond. That could be used for situations like that. 
The lid that I built is sized based on the external dimensions of the box. So it should fit over the half inch reveal that I left on the top boxes and it'll rest on the outer wood trim. And the lid must be deep enough to allow for the cover boards that you plan to use over the frames. My hinge selection here, these are just basic, you know, I went to, to Ace Hardware and picked up these hinges. I could have used piano hinges. I'd use those on my other hives and I kind of like the nice clean look. But in this case, I kind of like the exposed hardware look. I've got my metal disc entrance gates and then these exposed hinges and coating the wood with tongue oil as I did. It just kind of gave a nice, you know, sort of a nautical look, I guess. But I don't know, I just kind of like the look of the exposed hardware here. So went with that. And how you do it is up to you. So in summary on this, my internal box dimensions based on the Langstroth frames are 18 and 3 8 inches by 44 and 1 quarter inches. The standard depth is 16 and 3 quarter inches for Layens frames. Mine is slightly deeper than that you know, because I use a little bit bigger spacer. And if you have not seen the video showing the conversion hive in action, I would uh, encourage you to go and watch that video and see how I use this to work to migrate a colony from Langstraw to Layens frames. There are some lessons I learned in doing this as I started using the box. I realized that I might have preferred, and I think I will adapt this actually, to make the spacers only half the width of what I did. So rather than being the width of an entire Langstroth box, they would be the width of half of a Langstroth box. And that way, as far as doing these conversions, I could have three conversions going on in this hive at the same time, one in each of the Langstroth boxes. As it is, I'm using up two of the Langstroth boxes, but I'm only using part of each of those. I took the five frames from the nuke. That obviously didn't fill a Langstroth box. It left half of it open. And then I have five Layens frames for the bees to move on to. And uh, so I'm only using a part of the other box. And the rest of that is kind of wasted space. So if I really wanted to step up the migration, I can use half with spacer boxes and like I said, do three at a time. So I hope that this is helpful for you. If you want to do any sort of migrations from one frame size to another, I hope you get inspired to take what I've done, adapt it to your needs, improve on it. I'm sure there are lots of things I could have done better and put in the comments if you see anything that could be improved or uh, if you have built your own, let me know what you did differently and what you might've done that worked better for you or uh, what you see in mind that you like. And this is experimental, kind of a proof of concept. So any constructive criticism is certainly welcome. By using the movable adapters, the hive can be used for conversions between frame sizes as demonstrated. However, it also has other uses. If you took out the lower section, the lower box, and just use the upper deep Langstroth size box, you could use it as a long horizontal Langstroth hive. Or if you made Layens adapters to go the whole length of the hive, you could use it as a Layens hive. Or if you used for the lower section, if you used Langstroth deep boxes instead of the shallows, then you could use the larger Lazutin frames, which are the width of the Langstroth frames, in combination with Langstroth deep frames. So you'd have a deep Lazutin hive. Any of those is possible or a combination of those. Uh, so there's a lot of flexibility in this design for people to use it for what best fits your needs. Now that you've watched this video, I encourage you to watch this one to see how I move the bees on the Langstroth frames over to the Layens frames using this conversion hive. I also encourage you to check out this playlist of my other beekeeping videos. And I certainly do appreciate if you would like and subscribe to my channel and help to support the videos that I make. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.